Oh, OMG. Here we are to do another little tour, huh? Bet you don't recognize this building. Well, you probably do. It's called the Flatiron Building. We're going to be doing a tour of Madison Square Park today. Ah, because last week I did Union Square. It's a nice little, sick little plug there for my past video. But uh, we're going to be doing a video today of Madison Square, since you guys like the Union Square video so much. Before we start, just go ahead and please subscribe to the channel. That helps a lot. Like it. Give it a little thumbs up or whatever. And uh, check out my Patreon. All that stuff really helps. And then we'll do this walk. It'll be great. That's how these things keep coming. So uh, all that housekeeping out of the way. Uh, gonna get started here in a second. Uh, Dan, are you ready to do this? Look at that. Silent but deadly, baby. Yeah, baby. That's it. So we're gonna get started here. Gonna be going through Madison Square Park right here in front of the Flatiron. Uh, I think we should do this, right, Dan? Let's do it. Absolutely, let's do it. All right, let's go. So this here is the Flatiron, as I was just saying. The Flatiron building dates back to 1903. It's one of the tallest buildings in the city when it was actually finished. It's 22 stories, very beautiful building designed by Daniel Burnham. Interestingly enough, this building, uh, when it was finished, because it was so much taller than the buildings around, it created a wind tunnel. And uh, dudes would just hang out around the building waiting for the wind to blow women's skirts up. Kind of funny that uh, some things never change. And that thing that never changes, the guys are creeps. But it's a very beautiful building, one of the more iconic uh, buildings in the city. Also, the Daily Bugle offices from Spider-Man. Uh, Spider-Man, the first one. I don't know how many, maybe it's Spider-Man 10, or I don't know what number they're on at this point. So now we're getting at 23rd Street. That's what Madison Square Park is. Madison Square Park exists at the intersection of 23rd, uh, 5th, and Broadway. Okay, so 5th and Broadway intersect. That's how all the squares are created. We talked about this with Union Square. 4th and Broadway is what creates Union Square. 5th and Broadway is what creates uh, Madison Square. 6th and Broadway creates Herald Square. 7th, Times Square. Ah, look at that. Because in the grid plan, I'm going to keep repeating myself, but the grid plan of 1811, the avenues go north-south, right? Well, Broadway goes north, and it united with another street that cut diagonally. And in doing so, it crisscrossed with the different avenues of the city, creating the squares. So now we're going to be going into Madison Square Park. Check it out, Dan. We're going into Madison Square Park. Named after James Madison, fourth president of the United States, a Federalist. He was actually one of the buddies of Alexander Hamilton. I'm sure you guys have all heard of him because of that freaking play. I liked it before the play, I'll tell you that much. He's a very interesting story. But we're here in front of the William H. Seward statue. This is kind of an interesting, uh, first of all, there's a theory that Randolph, the, uh, the guy who built this, uh, his name is Randolph Rogers, the sculptor. The theory is that he actually used the body of Abraham Lincoln to just put the head of Seward on it because uh, he was cheap and didn't really want to do all the work because Seward was actually really tiny and that's a really tall body. Also, Seward has a very interesting story. First of all, he was a governor, senator, uh, secretary of state, in case you can't read that giant sign behind me. But interestingly enough, on the day that Lincoln was assassinated, they were actually trying to assassinate him and Andrew Johnson, the vice president. What happened was, the, the assassination attempt on Andrew Johnson was called off last second. The one against Seward actually went through. The guy, Lewis Powell, a former Confederate soldier, shows up to Seward's house to kill him because he was sick. He was, he was a convalescing at the time. It's a very fancy SAT word. He was getting better in his house, right? So the guy goes in, goes upstairs. The, the son of Seward stops him in the hall and he discharges his pistol. But he's able to get away and goes into the bedroom of Seward and stabs him in the face repeatedly with a knife. That's insane. But he survived, and he had a bunch of scars for the rest of his life. Look at that. But you didn't know that, huh, Dan? You're learning stuff, baby. Right, let's do it. Let's keep moving. So now we're going into Madison Square Park. So this park, once again, I was telling you guys when I did Union Square that the march north in Manhattan started going in the early 1800s. So Union Square opened in the late 1830s. This opened in the late 1840s. And remember, Washington Square, a little further south, opened in the late 1820s, 1826. 1839 for Union Square, and this opened in 1847. So the march north through Manhattan of development kind of started going and it kind of, uh, you know, created Madison Square Park. Some interesting stuff here though. So this park was created, and at the time there really wasn't a whole lot out here. Now we'll, we'll talk about the building over here on Fifth Avenue uh, in a little bit, but this was created as a little park, very nice, Madison Square Park. And here to the left you have one of the reasons that so many people go to this freaking place, and it's uh, Shake Shack. So in 2000, a man named Danny Meyer, very fancy chef, you know, he, uh, he created a hot dog stand kind of a little cart here that sold burgers and fries and stuff. And it got so popular that in 2004, he made a brick and mortar place. 
In 2010, it started to expand around New York, and then in 2015, it, you know, it did an IPO, you know, an IPO, initial public offering, you know, <laughs> it's a very fancy, uh, you know, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. I don't know any stuff about that stuff, but uh, that's how, and now it's all over the place. There's like 200 something locations around the world. Uh, so this is Shake Shack, really good burgers and stuff, uh, pretty good fries. But this here too, statue of Roscoe Conkling. Uh, this is actually designed by John Quincy Adams Ward, who also designed the uh, George Washington statue uh, on, on Wall Street. But uh, famous guy actually, well, not that famous. At the time he was famous. You guys may never have heard of him. But this guy was pretty famous back in the day. He was kind of the head of the Republican Party, which was kind of emerging in the late 1800s. He died in 1888 because he was leaving his law office on Wall Street during the blizzard of 1888 when 40 inches of snow fell in 36 hours. Uh, I don't know, I don't know, Eric, not very good at math, but I think that comes out to uh, 126 inches an hour. Uh, and he, uh, <laughs> is that wrong, Dan? I don't know. But anyways, he, he started walking and he was actually gonna take a cab, but the cab driver, uh, the livery cab, actually tried to charge him 50 bucks for that, for that cab ride, which in today's dollars would be $1,280. Uh, I think that's actually what it costs to get to JFK these days. But he said no, and he walked, and he actually passed out uh, in, near Union Square, uh, and he developed pneumonia and he died. Sad, he was kind of a kingmaker back then, a very, very important head of the Republican Party. Ah, there he is, just a statue. Most people don't know who he is. They eat their burgers and fries and just walk right by him. Story of our lives, no matter how hard we try, in 100 years, no one's gonna care. Let's keep moving. So this is 23rd Street here, and you'll see some of the older buildings this little building here is 14. you see kind of what it used to be around here so back in the mid 1800s when this park was developed all the area around it became kind of a fancy place to live tons and tons of brownstones because in the mid 1800s the brownstone was super popular to build with its mine in connecticut new jersey so it went up all over new york you could see it in brooklyn a lot uh greenwich village but that was what was kind of around the park at the time today it's places to live like that thing not my favorite building in the city uh, let's see who lives there. Uh, I think it's Peter Buffett, Warren Buffett's son. Uh, Tom Brady and Giselle have a place there. Uh, Rupert Murdoch. Yikes. All right. Keep moving, baby. Over here, you have the Metropolitan Life Insurance Tower. This is a really cool building. This was finished in 1909, actually. So this building was finished in 1909. It was the tallest building in the world for a little while, until 1913 when the Woolworth Building was finished. It's modeled after the St. Mark's Campanile in Venice, Italy. But interestingly enough, that Campanile collapsed in 1902 and it had to be rebuilt. So this one is technically older because it, that one was built, you know, a little later. No problem, thank you. So today this is actually, there's a hotel inside of it. Really pretty clock though. Uh, I don't know, nice, nice, nice building. I don't know what to tell you. On here to the left, you'll see the park again. We're, we're still walking, now we're walking up. This all here is Madison. Madison Avenue. I don't know if you guys have seen the show Mad Men, Madison Avenue, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, oh, check this out. Look, they're doing a movie here. Or they're filming Ghost. That's what this means when they're filming something in the, in the neighborhood, they put these little neon things up. It's like they're filming Ghost. Maybe I can get a uh, job on this thing, huh? I'll give it a shot. All right. That's right, City of Dreams, baby. So now we're walking back into the park. So this park has gone through lots of iterations. So I told you this opened in 1847, but they hit its kind of heyday. This neighborhood hit its heyday kind of in 1870 to the early 1900s. By the early 1900s, the march upward of all the rich people and their lives and their houses and stuff continued up north, further up north down Fifth Avenue over near the park, let's say Central Park. And this became a little more commercial, had like the, you know, the, the Flatiron Building opened 1903, Metropolitan Life Insurance, it became more commercial. You have all, they always have like different art installations here too. Right now they have this one. I guess these are Atlantic cedar trees or cedar pines. It's supposed to be a comment on, I guess, how the island has changed and a lot of the fauna and stuff has uh, disappeared. Fauna, that's a good SAT word. Let's keep moving. So this also used to be a potter's field as well. This was a potter's field back in the day, meaning it was an all purpose field. There's a lot of swampy land, but it was considered kind of on the outsides of the city. So now here, I'm going to show you this building. You can see outside, we're going to pop out here. 
We're Madison and 25th. The park, by the way, goes from 23rd to 26th. Madison to Fifth Avenue. So this here is the Appellate Division Courthouse. Kind of interesting, you have a couple important statues up there. You have Peace in the middle there. That's Carl Bitter, very famous sculptor. He, de he designed the Pomona statue over in the middle of, uh, of the Pomona Fountain, was a Pulitzer Fountain over in front of the Plaza Hotel, whose model was Audrey Munson, which we'll talk about here in a second. And also, too, in the middle in the front there, the 25th, 25th Street side, you have another statue, and that is Justice by uh, Daniel Chester French. Daniel Chester French famously sculpted Lincoln Memorial, baby. Come on. He also used to live on Gramercy Park. This is the Pella Division Courthouse. It's a courthouse here. Famous uh, trivia about this courthouse. This is where I uh, was sworn in to be in the New York City, uh, the New York Bar Association um, as a lawyer. That's right. I was sworn in in this building. So if you ever need anyone to defend you, uh, I'll, I'll take a break from YouTube videos and I'll uh, go in there and deliver my closing argument for you. I'll say, uh, you know, if anyone in the jury here finds my client uh, innocent, smash that not guilty button. I guess I'll do my best. All right. And I was saying, too, I forgot to mention that Madison Square Park, 6.2 acres. Very small. If you compare it to, let's say, you know, Central Park, 843 acres. Pretty tiny. So this building here is pretty cool right here on the corner. This is the New York Life Insurance Building. It was built in 1928. Cass Gilbert was the architect. Uh, he's loved putting those little pyramid things on top of his buildings. If, you, if you've ever seen his other work, the Woolworth Building, the Appellate Courthouse uh, down in Foley Square. It was built in 1928, but more cool than that was what it replaced. Let's stay here in the shade, dude. I got it in the background. It's hot. It's hot as hell here today. It's like 96 degrees, uh, and uh, we're trying not to pass out. But we're doing this for you <laughs> because we love you. So, uh, you know like and subscribe and stuff. <clears throat> Anyways, what's more cool about this building is what it replaced. This replaced Madison Square Garden. Ah! So in 1832, a depot, a train depot was built here. The Vanderbilts, uh, who owned a lot of the railroads, put a train depot here that was replaced in 1870 by a train depot up where Grand Central is put today. The building that housed that train depot was then vacant. Then it was used as like an entertainment center. A man named P.T. Barnum, if you know who he is, he used it for a little bit, etc. In fact, in 1877, they had the first Westminster Kennel Club dog show here. Oh. But in 1879, the Vanderbilts take it over and they rename it Madison Square Garden because it's Madison Square. What? So it stays Madison Square Garden until 1890s when they build a new one there. A man named Stamford White, an extremely famous architect. He designed the, uh, let's see, he designed the uh, uh, Washington Arch. Uh, Stanford, McKimmey and White, the firm, also designed Old Penn Station. They designed the municipal building. Very famous, one of the most famous architectural firms in New York history. But Stanford White himself designs the new Madison Square Garden. On top is Diana. She's got a bow and arrow, and it's Audrey Munson, the, the model, once again, that Carl Bitter used at the Pulitzer Fountain. I'm digressing. Anyways, that second incarnation of Madison Square Garden is here until the 1920s. But in 1906, interestingly enough, Stanford White, who was kind of a man about town, I actually did a video about him. You should check it out. Yeah, anyways, um, he actually was, uh, he slept around a lot with a lot of people, and one of the women he slept around with was named Evelyn Nesbitt. She went on to marry a guy named Harry K. Thaw, a wealthy heir uh, uh, of uh, steel fortune, and uh, he was a very jealous man and kind of insane. So much so that after a show on the roof there, he goes up to Stanford White while he's sitting there enjoying his drinks, and he shoots him in the head on his own building. Stanford White shot in the head, killed on his own freaking building. They have the actual uh, trial at Jefferson Market Courthouse in Greenwich Village. Harry K. Thaw, Stanford White. Trial, it was called the trial of the century. That was before O.J. Simpson. So I guess it's a close, a close second. All right, let's keep moving. And this is a really great neighborhood, by the way. It has really cool businesses. In fact, this is where Mendez Boxing used to be. Uh, it's a place I used to love going to. They recently closed down. It's very sad, but you can check out a video about it. Uh, I did a video about it, so uh, check it out. <laughs> Sick plug. But that reminds me that here, uh, what used to be Madison Square Park, uh, Madison Square Garden, uh, which by the way was a beautiful Booza building designed by Stanford White. Booza, Booza. Anyways, before Stanford White designed it, uh, Vanderbilt owned it in the 1870s, starting in the late 1870s. They used to have uh, boxing matches there, but boxing was illegal in New York starting in the 1850s, and so they used to call them uh, lectures in pugilism. That's how they got around it. They called them lectures and pugilism. Yeah, so if you ever get into an argument at the bar, just look at the other guy and be like, hey man, you keep it up, buddy, and I'll give, me, give you a lecture in pugilism, bitch. Sorry about that, Dan. Very inappropriate. All right. 
We're back in the park. Look at this. We just entered through 26. Also, too, over here on the on 26, you have some pretty famous people that live over here with a beautiful view of the park, including uh, J Lo and A Rod had a place here before J Lo left him for good old Ben Affleck. OMG, totes cray cray, huh? Also, Chelsea Clinton. Uh, yeah, that's right. I know these things. Uh, I'm actually friends with Chelsea Clinton's dog walker. I know people in high places, no big deal. That's uh, part, comes with the territory. Also, check this out here. This is a pretty cool uh, statue. Chester A. Arthur, I don't know if you guys know who he is. President of the United States. He became president when uh, Garfield, James Garfield, was, uh, was uh, uh, killed. Cue uh, dramatic music. But yeah, pretty cool uh, statue. All right, he's the guy who dedicated the Brooklyn Bridge, by the way. When the Brooklyn Bridge was dedicated, he's the one who did it. Yeah, it's scavenger hunt. That's what we're on right now, pretty much. Huh? Scavenger hunt. Hope we don't see a silver-haired bat. All right, let's keep going. Pretty cool, Madison Square, Madison Square Garden came from here, huh? After it was done here in the 1920s, it moved to Hell's Kitchen, where it was briefly uh, for, a few, for a few decades, and then it went to the current location at what is today Penn Station. Which, by the way, Penn Station was demolished in 1963. I covered that in a video as well. Sick plug, baby. I'll show you guys this here. That's Admiral David Farragut. That's a pretty famous uh, sculptor. And uh, in fact, the base was Stanford White. We just talked about him. He designed the base. And then the statue itself was Augustus Sigodan. Uh, sorry, that's brutalizing his name. But he designed, for example, the uh, William Tecumseh Sherman statue in uh, uh, Grand Army Plaza next to the park. Everything put together. By the way, Farragut, uh, one of the earliest, uh, I think he was the first admiral in uh, United States history. He, was, uh, he fought in the Civil War and famously said, uh, damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead, when he was at the uh, Battle of Mobile Bay against the Confederacy. They were shooting torpedoes at him. He's like, screw it, I'm going. He, started, he joined the uh, Navy when he was nine years old. More like, damn the child labor laws, full speed ahead, huh? Nine years old in the Navy? Come on. All right, <laughs> let's keep moving, baby. Over here to the right, you have a little museum. The MoMath, the Museum of Math. Talk about bad news and worse news for kids going on a, on a, on a uh, field trip. Good Lord. Where's our field trip to? The museum, oh, which museum? Museum of Math. Dear Lord, sorry, kids. All right, now we're gonna pop out of 26. You're gonna see a really great view here. A pretty famous building, and then we're gonna head south. How you doing, Dan? You doing all right? Good, baby. Yeah, you feeling good? You learning stuff? Yeah, I'm learning so much about. It. Good. Yeah, this is all stuff you can use when you come on a date yeah. here. You know, impress people. That's what these videos are for—to get everyone laid. YouTube and chill. Let's watch Tom DNYC and chill. <laughs> all right, check it out. There here is uh, it's the Empire State Building. Great view. You always see people parked here taking pictures. The Empire State Building is kind of out of the purview of this tour, but it's a pretty great uh, building. Finished in 1931, it only took 14 months to complete. It was the tallest building in the world until the World Trade Center was finished in the 1970s. Uh, it was built for the express purpose of filming the end scene of Sleepless in Seattle. That's not true, I just made that up. But uh, pretty cool building. In fact, that little circular thing was actually built initially as a, as a docking station for blimps, pretty much. And, uh, until they decided that that's a terrible, terrible idea. It'd be awful and terrible and dangerous, so they didn't do it. Um, but uh, pretty cool. In fact, uh, also too, spoiler alert, the end of King Kong, he dies from that building, which is one of the things that made it really, really a uh, cool building. Because in 1931, the Great Depression had just started, so no one was renting out the office space. But in 1933, King Kong came out, he dies falling off that building, and everyone's like, that building is sick! And everyone just filled it in, and the rest is history. Empire State Building. All right. We're almost done. You doing, you doing okay, Dan? Okay, good. I'm worried about you. I'm worried sick about you. Dan got a little bit of a sunburn. I don't want him to get hurt. It's hot, man. We're out here in like 96 degrees. I'm sweating. That's right, we're exactly. Risk it for the biscuit. Never heard that before. And I hope to never hear it again. I'm just kidding. Check it out. So here, before we pop into the park and come back out, I'm going to show you this. This here is a monument to General Jenkins Worth, William Jenkins Worth. So this is an obelisk that marks the spot where he's buried. 
This guy's buried here. He was a general for the Mexican uh, War, the Mexican War, the uh, and also the Seminole Wars, which I covered in my Tampa video. Ah, oh, I covered the Seminole Wars. That's when they were, you know, starting to populate uh, Florida in the, like the early 1800s. And anyways, he's buried there, which is kind of crazy. So when people go to you know, eat their burritos and Shake Shacks. They're stomping all over someone's dead body, which is kind of crazy, but a pretty cool little obelisk. In fact, uh, Fort Worth, Texas, named after him. Ah, kind of cool, right? All right, back in we go. We're almost done. We're snaking around, this is great. Man, I'm sweating, holy Lord. I showered right before I came here too, not to brag. You did not. I thought I smelled something. So we were just come, we were just walking down Fifth Avenue, by the way. You continue down Fifth Avenue, you would eventually get down to. Uh, it takes you all the way down to Washington Square. It ends at Washington Square, or begins. Glass half full, glass half empty. I don't know. There's one Madison I was telling you guys before with Rupert Murdoch and all those people. Rupert Murdoch. <laughs> There's a little dog run, pretty nice. I always feel bad for dogs in, in New York, man. It's like no space here. People are living, they're like living in like these tiny, you know, tiny apartments. And then you have here the Eternal Flagstaff. It was built in the 1920s to honor uh, World War I, people who died in World War I. In fact, uh, during a parade, uh, Charles Lindbergh came by here, left a wreath on there. After, uh, he did his thing. Probably right before he went to some anti-Semite conference. He was anti-Semitic. Did you know that? Big time. Also, too, the Eternal Flagstaff was designed by Thomas Carrere of Carrere and Hastings. If you don't know who Carrere and Hastings is, they're the ones who designed uh, the New York Public Library. Ah, pretty cool building if you've never been. I covered that in my Midtown video. Yeah, check that out. Also, too, the New York Public Library. Uh, a lot of movies filmed there. Spider-Man, again. Uh, Spoiler alert, Sex in the City. Oh, Carrie Bradshaw gets stood up at the altar. Sorry, I spoiled that for you, Dan. All right, we're gonna cross here. All right, so if you look over there in the corner, we're now here at Broadway, there's Fifth Avenue over there, but over there in the corner, you wanna get in here. This building here was built in 1909. There's actually a little clock there in front. That building replaced what was built there in 1859. So in 1859, the uh, Fifth Avenue Hotel was built there. That was like the hotel in New York until it was demolished in the early 1900s. Every single president stayed there. All the politics were there. Teddy Roosevelt's failed campaign for mayor uh, was, was headquartered there. It was really, really important. Uh, it was the first hotel with a uh, passenger elevator, ah, which is very important because that's what made like the upper floors and the rooms in the upper floors more uh, desirable. People, before that, no one wanted to be in the upper floors. They, they didn't want to walk all the stairs if you're rich. Yeah. Kind of cool. That was all there in that spot. And before it was the hotel, it was actually a, uh, like a little hippodrome. It was like a place where they had ran horses and stuff like that. And before that, it was like this cottage called Corporal, Co uh, Corporal Thompson's Cottage. That was like a, uh, this is all the way to like the, throughout the 1840s, in the late 1830s. And it was like a saloon for the people that were leaving the city. It was so far out of the city at that time. This is the late 1830s and 1840s. All right, so now we're back here in front of this thing. You can see it in front of, uh, in front of this building. But uh, yeah, we're here in front of the Flatiron again. Uh, kind of kind of cool. Also, too, another couple of things to keep in mind here. Oh, this building here, I forgot to mention. This was designed by Henry, Henry Hardenberg, 1883. Henry Hardenberg's the guy who designed the Dakota building, designed the Plaza Hotel. This was a Western Union Telegraph building. Got a pretty little building. You can see kind of the similarities a little bit to the, uh, I'm digressing. Also, to Fifth Avenue here. This is all Fifth Avenue. You can see behind me, there's the Empire State Building. We gotta get him a nice little panorama. Look at us. Uh, so I forgot to mention this when we were walking by. So the building next to the uh, Campanile building, right there at the top, it was supposed to be extremely tall. It was gonna be one of the tallest buildings in the world, but because of the Great Depression, which struck, they had to stop construction, so they just put a roof on it. Isn't that kind of nuts? Can't get to everything. That's what every, you know, after the end of all these videos, people always type away and they're like, oh, well, you forgot to mention this. What kind of a video is this? Blah. Hey, I'm just walking around here. I can't keep Dan here all day, all right? We gotta walk around. We gotta finish this at some point. It's just we're walking, baby. We're loose. We're just chatting. Well, that's pretty much it, guys. A couple facts I forgot to mention also. Um, that baseball, 
the, the New York Knickerbockers Baseball Club used to play their games right over in this area. In 1842, they started playing baseball right here. They actually ended up having a move, and the first recorded game was in New Jersey, in Hoboken. There's a plaque and all that stuff there, but they actually started it here, so they say the actual roots of the game were right here in Madison Square Park, right in this area. That was before it was actually an official park, but in this area. Also, too, to the north, I forgot to mention this, this whole area to the north of Madison Square is considered a nomad. Nomad. North of Madison Square, so cool. The whole idea behind giving those names is just to jack up the rents and make everything fancy. Nomad, no ho, no Lita, no thanks. <laughs> All right, I gotta end this video. This is getting ridiculous. All right, so here's the deal, guys. The video's just about done. We're finished. If you like the video, please like, subscribe. Uh, check out the Patreon, that helps a ton. Uh, we're here in front of the Flatiron Building, Madison Square Park. I'm gonna do all the other squares as well. I'll get to Herald Square, I'll get to Times Square. Uh, although I covered Times Square briefly in the Midtown video, I'm gonna get to all this stuff. There's a lot of stuff to go through, all right? But that being said, uh, did I forget anything, Dan? Do you know if I forgot anything? I thought we have a wonderful day. Hey, thanks, man. You're a really nice guy. Yeah, he said I should tell you guys to have a very wonderful day, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have a very wonderful day. Uh, you know, trying to expand everything here, baby. Trying to grow. We're gonna, who knows where this channel is going to be in a year. I'll probably, probably still be living with roommates, but uh, maybe I won't have as much of a difficult time playing rent. <laughs> you know, so uh, well. All right, I'm, I'm rambling. It's uh, done. We did it. See y'all later. That's right, Dan. Sick. <laughs>